If you're fairly new to Guam or you think you might be visiting the island or potentially moving here, then I'm glad you're here because in today's video, we'll be taking a brief look at what you can expect during your time here. So in today's video, it's just going to be basic information about the island, uh, what it's like living here, what are the people like, um, schools and uh, religious communities, weather, um, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but I do have other videos where I go more in depth about restaurants and dining, water activities, sports, fitness, recreation, so on and so forth. So if you do want to take a look at those, you can subscribe to the channel and check out those videos as well. So starting off, where in the world is Guam, right? Well, we're a U.S. territory and we're a little island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. If you were to draw a circle around Hawaii, the Philippine Islands, Japan, and Australia, we're in that area. <laughs> and so with that being said, living here, it is very easy to travel and explore other areas of Southeast Asia. During my time here, I've been able to go uh, through the Philippines, going to Thailand, um, Bali, a couple of my friends have been to Australia and Japan and again for a little bit more of like affordable prices. Traveling from here to the United States however, not so much, not as affordable as I'd like. Uh, so those are trips that definitely, you know, are more rare than none. So Guam is not too big of an island as compared to places like Hawaii and we're also not too small of a place. We've kind of got that Goldilocks complex where we're just right. Um, if you were to drive nonstop around the entire island, it would probably take you two hours or less. Because Guam is not that big of a place to begin with, um, wherever you decide to work as compared to where you decide to live, uh, drive time would not be that crazy. Um, you can expect to maybe be as far as like 30 to 40 minutes from where you work. What is the weather like on Guam? Well, it's consistently humid. Uh, you can expect it to be very warm, sometimes hot. Mo mostly during the summer is when it's very, very hot. But the upside is the humidity. So it's not like a dry heat where you feel like you're choking. Um, and the moisture is good for your skin. So again, the upside, right? Starting around mid to late November and up until the end of January, that's where we get a little bit of cool weather where it gets to as low in the 70s so nothing too drastic like like winter temperatures um, but it is very nice and comfortable during those months as far as religious groups go guam has a huge catholic community here um, there are smaller church groups such as uh, baptist mormon methodist seventh-day adventist but and others but rest assured every single village here on guam has at least one catholic church for schools, there are a good number of preschools, elementary, middle, and high schools spread throughout the entire island. Um, but one thing I've heard for sure is our University of Guam and the Guam Community College is highly recommended if you were specializing in marine biology. I mean, if you were just to take a look at some of the sites here, the hikes, beaches, snorkeling spots and whatnot, this would be the best place to do a degree like that. Now glossing over more of the military communities here, we have two main military bases here, one being the Anderson Air Force Base, which is up north in Jigo, and then at the very opposite end uh, would be the Naval Base Guam, or Big Navy as some of us call it, and that's down in Santa Rita. But there are other military installations such as the uh, Nick Tams, um, uh, Nav Mag, and the Naval Hospital, and other ones there. Um, so that's where you can expect where we have a lot of newcomers to the island who have been transferred here because of their orders. So now this is where I segue into what kind of people you can expect to meet while you're here on Guam. As I mentioned, we do have a lot of um, military families here, but Guam's industry is also um, highly dependent on tourism. So we do get a lot of tourists coming in from uh, Japan, Korea, sometimes Russia. And then of course there's the indigenous people of Guam. Uh, primarily I would say it's, it's equal parts of uh, Chamorros, Filipinos, and other Micronesian Islanders. So we're kind of like this mini melting pot if you think about it that way. 
So I mentioned Chamorros, and I know for those of you who might not be very familiar with that term, it's basically the original inhabitants of Guam. And Chamorro people are definitely a true embodiment of the idea that it's not, you know, the place, but it's the people that make it home. And if you are visiting here for the first time, you'll know if you meet a true Chamorro. And this is gonna sound terrible because it's, I have to give you the distinction between a Chamorro and a Chad. Very two different kinds of people. So if you were to meet a true Chamorro family, they are the most hospitable, welcoming kind of people you can meet. They are, I've heard so many stories of people who are new to the island and their neighbor just comes over and is like, hey, I have an avocado tree, do you want some? Um, or somebody that's like, hey, you're new to the island. Um, do you like fishing? Like I own a boat, you wanna go? They're just very, very welcoming and they're who are the people that make you feel like you're home. So they are very different from chads. And that's just kind of like a slang, and I can use it because I'm half tomorrow, okay? <laughs> but um, you'll know if you come across somebody like that as well. They have a very entitled personality, and they're they're definitely not true tomorrows. These are people who have, um, they've lived on Guam a while. Um, sometimes they are actually tomorrow, which pains me because they're a horrible representation of the tomorrow culture, but they have a very entitled personality. Uh, they are very territorial, not welcoming at all, most of the time uneducated. So if you are to come across a chad, you know, please don't let that be your interpretation of what Guam is about. Now if you're planning to visit Guam and it's just for a short time, like say like 7 to 10 days on vacation, um, then I would definitely recommend looking up some cheap B&Bs um, or even check out, you know, if you want to go a little more bougie, check out some of the hotels and that would be more along the Tumon Strip. Um, however, if you know that you are moving here or you're planning to move here, then I'll go into a couple of the different areas that, you know, might suit different personalities. Now, if you like being in those kind of like busy, noisy communities, then there are definitely a lot of places in uh, Dededo, in Tumon and Tumoning, and sometimes a little bit in East Agania. Um, that's like, you know, where you're a lot closer to a lot of uh, businesses, a lot of restaurants. However, if you like more of a quiet lifestyle, then I would definitely recommend either uh, all the way up in Jigo near the Air Force Base. Um, there are some nice areas on the east side like uh, Manilao or Jotnia. Um, and then on the west side, I would say more so like Aganya Heights, um, some, some areas in Sinahanya. And then of course, moving all the way south, like into Agate and Marizo, Umatic, those areas all down south are very, very quiet. Some you might get lucky and be uh, beachside, but wherever you are living, the drive to the beaches are no more than 15 minutes. So you could still enjoy, you know, being more inland and then if you wanted to explore the beaches or have that experience, it's not that far. In all my time here, I have heard very different perspectives from people who have visited here or have lived here for a little bit, and it has ranged from they've either loved it or they've hated it. And it all boils down to just how much did you immerse yourself in the island and in the people. So for example, did you really get out there and you know try to experience the island firsthand, do some hikes, go swimming, go fishing, meet people, meet the locals, or did you just stay home and you know stay cloistered the entire time? Because obviously that's gonna be a miserable experience no matter what. It's really up to you when you get here. So that was Guam at a glance. I hope you liked it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And like I mentioned before, I do have other videos where I go more in depth into you know things that you can do around the island. And so if you want to check those out, definitely subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.